Um, well, welcome. Um, my name is Ed Ewing. I'm the executive director here at Bike Works, and it is an honor to be leading such a wonderful um, organization. Um, tonight, we have the pleasure of having uh, several staff members, staff members of Bike Works. If you could wave uh, to everyone, that would be great. Thank you for um, participating. We also have the uh, pleasure of having several Bike Works board members here. If board members, if you could wave, uh, that would be great as well. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> and we also have uh, former executive director, Deb Sells, who was very instrumental in creating this strategic plan, our 2021, 2025 strategic plan. Deb, thank you for joining us and uh, starting this wonderful process. Um, before we get uh, started, uh, many of you know Bike Works. Uh, we are located in Columbia City. Um, uh, we are going to be celebrating our 25th anniversary um, in, in January, excuse me, in June. Um, but for those of you who do not know, we are a South Seattle based bicycle nonprofit with a mission to promote the bicycle as a vehicle for change. And we do this through a couple of different thing, areas, through our youth and adult programs, our bicycle recycling initiative, and our community bike shop. Uh, before we get started again, I'd like to give a shout out to our 25th anniversary sponsors who make our community events spot possible. Um, again, our biggest celebration of the year is coming up June 13th. We are gonna be turning 25 by excitement. So please save the date for June 13th. Um, of this year. Um, we look forward to seeing everyone um, join us in June. I'd also like to acknowledge that here in Seattle, we are on traditional land of indigenous people, including the Kosalish and Duwamish tribe, among others. One of the ways you can support vitality of the vitality of the Duwamish tribe who are not federally recognized is by making rent payments directly to Real Rent Duwamish. Um, for more information about Real Rent Duwamish, please uh, check the chat. Uh, the link to Real Rent is in the chat. Um, you may use this resource to learn more about the native lands you may be living on if you're outside of the area or if you are here in Seattle. <clears throat> you're welcome to share questions and comments tonight um, in the chat throughout the evening. We will try, we'll do our best to get to all, um, but please uh, keep in mind, um, again, if um, the notes from the breakout sessions and um, questions will be shared in the follow-up e email. We'll be monitoring the chat box as we go. We have two breakout sessions this evening and we're asking that when you are in the breakout sessions that you follow the group norms, the group discussion norms. Um, your breakout sessions will be facilitated by a Bike Works board member and a Bike Works staff member uh, facilitated and also taking notes. Um, those group discussion norms are put relationships first Assume best intent, but your own impact. Step up and step back. If you notice that you are talking a bit, you know, step back and allow space for other people to add input and to, input and to talk. Enough, let's move on or Elmo and speak from your own experience. Before we get started with the details of the, of the strategic plan, we're gonna have our first breakout session as an icebreaker just to get to know one another and to build community. The question for our first icebreaker tonight, and you will be selected randomly. We'll have 10 minutes for this, for this to answer this question in breakout rooms. The question is, what does social justice and racial equity and or community building look like in your life? Again, the question is, what does social justice, racial equity and or community building look life in your, in your life. Again, you'll have 10 minutes. There'll be a bike work staff member and a board member in your group to facilitate and take notes. You'll be randomly selected for the breakout sessions. Um, we will have 10 minutes for this exercise and enjoy. That was my first breakout session ever on Zoom and that was an interesting experience. Yeah. Feels like it goes by too quickly. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't realize how it would end because I thought that it would yeah, end in our yeah, terms, but okay. it just ends on its term and just transfers what? back here. Yeah, it's like you get thrown into a like a hyperloop or something. You just get <laughs> shuttled. I, ways. as the breakout room person, have the power to just move you all around like pieces on a chessboard or whatever room I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> We're all just pawns in your game. That is a funny power to have. Hi, Alec. 
awesome. How's it going? Good. It's good to see you here. Yeah, good to see you virtually. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Jess, why don't you go ahead and share your screen again? Um, Elise, you or whoever, you might want to update the year on that uh, 25th anniversary. It still says 2020. On what? Uh, Ed was talking about the 25th anniversary, 13th of June, and it says 2020. Well, it actually comes with a time machine this year. So we're going back oh, oh, because everyone? we just couldn't okay. get enough of 2020. You know, it was such a fantastic year. So best year ever. <laughs> Thanks for the catch, David. As you can tell, we're missing having you around Bike Works. You found it here first. Jess, our, our in house stand up. Hey, Ricky. How are you? Hello. I don't know who that is, but. What's hi. up? Brian Flora, Alex, and Reese's dad. Oh, yeah. Hey. What's up, Brian? Good to see oh, you. Yeah. Well, I can't see you, but yeah, oh, doing I'm well. Eating. That's why. All right, welcome back, everybody. Um, <laughs> if anybody could mute, um, and um, we're gonna. What we'd like to do is a popcorn style report out. If three or four groups um, in tonight could take twenty seconds and volunteer to report out on some themes or highlights from your group discussion. Again, please be mindful of time and our group norms. Um, you are also welcome to put your group highlights in the chat. So. Would any group like to share a key highlights and themes from your group discussion? Again, uh, in 20 minutes, and excuse me, in 20 seconds. Yeah, this is Joelle. Um, I'd be willing to share for my group. I believe we're breakout group number one. Um, so 20 seconds, here we go. Uh, what does social justice, racial equity, and community building look like in your life? We have engaging from the onset. Uh, not talking about communities, but talking with and for advocating on behalf of communities. Uh, it looks like inclusion, um, too much falls short from, too many of these opportunities fall short from including people. Uh, finding balance for youth autonomy, uh, as well as understanding who has access to organizations and people and who's making decisions. Um, yeah, that, I think that is my time. Thank you, Joel. Who else would like to share? Uh, I can give a quick share out. Um, I believe that I'm with Breakout Group 5, um, and some of the themes that came up in our group discussion were uh, like youth empowerment and youth autonomy and putting um, a lot of emphasis on um, youth as a, you know, an avenue of social justice, and then also um, talked a lot about um, looking at social justice from an environmental standpoint and um, all of us being our own like environmental stewards, so. It was pretty cool, pretty cool. Thank you, Allie. Who else? Anyone else? We have maybe two more groups would like to share in 20 seconds or less. Um, this is Jean. Uh, Siobhan and I led, I think it was breakout three. Not sure about that. But we spent our time talking about our connection to bike works as a community. Everybody <clears> talked <throat> about their first to introduce themselves and their connection to Bike Works. And it's amazing how, um, what a community Bike Works has built over the past couple decades, past 25 years. So that's what we spent our time talking about is our connection to the community already. Great, thank you, Jean. All right, well, thanks for sharing everyone. Um, <clears throat> so the next part of the, uh, the evening, we were actually gonna dive into our st strategic plan. Um, again, thank you for being here tonight. Um, the strategic plan, um, this was a year long process. Um, we have just begun implementation um, with staff um, in, in the last matter of weeks. Um, the board approved the strategic plan um, at the end of January um, and staff, uh, we were all eager to get started. And so we're just starting that process. Um, so great, here we go. Um, just to review and give you an overview of Bike Works, um, our mission, vision, and values. Our mission is Bike Works promotes the bicycle as a vehicle for change to empower youth and build resilient communities. Our vision is mobilize people, thriving communities, healthy planet. Our values are bicycling, youth, community, education, access, environment, and social justice. 
Again, this is a year long process. There are a number of different groups that help to inform and create the strategic plan, ranging from our staff, board of directors, our youth advocacy committee, a racial equity task force, which I had the privilege of being a part of, and it's our plan for the next 2021 through 2025. <clears throat> and we're reviewing all of our work through a racial equity lens. Again, the board approved the, um, the racial, the, uh, this strategic plan at the end of um, 2020, and we are now currently in, in implementation. Our, our values and vision and mission were written in 2011. Um, and refreshing those is also part of the strategic plan. And we're actively ask, asking staff, do these still reflect the purpose and the direction of our organization? Our commitment to racial equity and accountability. We've chose to focus on racial equity because <clears throat> when we look at all aspects of identity and oppression, we find that race affects everyone. We acknowledge that the oppression takes many forms, including racism, sexism, ableism, classism, but that in our, in our country, racism hurts every oppressed community. We have chosen to focus specifically on racial equity as a, as a leverage point to work towards justice for all. We will be explicit about who we are serving, who has a seat at the table, where decisions are made, and how our work is accessible to all people in Seattle. Just to give you a snapshot, and starting with a board and staff diversity. And if we look at our board diversity, in February of 2020, we had a board of six consistent of 16 community members with 25% who of people who identified as people of color. One year later in February of 2021, our board is consists of 17 members and 47% of board members identify as people of color. For staff in February of 2020, 16 staff members, 25 percent, 25% identified as people of color. And in February of 2021, we had a staff of 13 and 46% identify as people of color. So we're approaching our goal of 50%. One thing that we are actively engaged in right now is hiring four new staff members who are all of color. Once they're onboarded, we will have a goal of 50%. When we firmly realize that there is a difference between attracting and retaining staff members of color, and one thing that we're actively doing is creating and is having conversations and creating a culture, an organizational environment and culture that supports and enhances racial equity and encourages racial diversity in staff. Now let's dive into the four areas of our strategic plan. The four areas are bike works culture community engagement, job opportunities, and space. Let's start with bike works culture. After several conversations with staff, we've chosen that bike works culture is the first part of the strategic plan that we want to implement. And we are actively doing that right now. When we look at bike works culture, we wanna promote the intersection, intersection, intersectional equity by cultivating a culture at bike works of transparency, curiosity, innovation, learning, community and abundance. And that will exist in two areas. The first area is shared power, fair, fair compensation and constant improvement. The second area is through communal atmosphere, community orientation and a culture of abundance and education. The second aspect of our, of our strategic plan is community engagement. In community engagement, we will actively engage neighbors and partner organizations to share our resources and build stronger communities. And that ranges from expanding our engagement strategy to make organizational resources accessible to all, to develop an extended sense of ownership of bike works within our community and establish organizational positions that will focus on community engagement efforts. The third part of our strategic plan is job access or access to job opportunities. We wanna offer progressive opportunities within the bicycle industry. And this is a change, um, a shift in thinking rather than thinking of specifically a bike shop, but look at the bicycle industry and the outdoor industry to increase job access for people who come from historically marginalized communities, ranging from continuing to offer our job readiness training for 16 to 20 year olds, as well as job skills training for 18 to 24 year olds, to continue to work in a bicycle leadership program, and also to create a bicycle mechanic certification program. The fourth aspect of our strategic plan is our space. We're outgrowing our space. 
Part of our strategic plan for bike work space is we'll be examining our space and facility needs through a racial equity lens so we can better serve the community, so we can continue and better serve the community. The current change in demographics of the Columbia City is has us asking the questions internally, how do we continue to serve our, our community, the diverse community that we initially were serving? We, we're, we're recognizing that a lot of the diverse clientele and the clientele that is in need of our services is moving further south. So we're examining how do we do that through partnerships, through pop-up shops, through additional bike mobiles. Um, we will be actively engaging the community in this conversation. Now it's time for our second, our second, um, our second breakouts rooms. We'll have a little more time now. We'll take 20 minutes to talk about our strategic plan in your individual groups. And there's three questions that we'd like you to focus on. One is what excites you about this strategic plan? Number two is what questions does this raise for you? And number three is how does this plan intersect with your goals and visions for the community? Again, we'll have 20 minutes. You'll have a Bike Works board member and staff member to help facilitate and take notes. Again, the questions are, what excites you about this strategic plan? What questions does this raise for you? And how does, how does this plan intersect with your goal, goals and visions for the community? All right, we're gonna jump into to breakout rooms. If this is your second time in a breakout room, <laughs> please enjoy. Um, have fun, ask questions, and please be mindful of our group norms, step up, step back, share from your own personal perspective and follow the, the Bike Works group norms. All right, we'll see you back here in 20 minutes. Welcome back, everybody. We had more to say, wait. <laughs> yeah, we also got cut off a little bit too. Welcome back, everyone. Austin, I'm, I'm sorry you got cut off towards the end. And uh, to your question, it would be exciting to work with you and the Boys and Girls Club again. So um, let's 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 figure it out. Okay, everyone. Um, so for the next um, next several minutes, let's uh, repeat that. Let's do a popcorn style report out with themes and highlights from your groups, um, or you may also post in the chat. Um, again, remember in the group norms, put relationships first, assume the best intent, but your own impact, step up, step back enough and speak from your own experience. So um, in 20 seconds or less, could we have three or four? Maybe we can take five groups this time. Um, who would like to start off? Uh, I can give a quick share out. So um, I was in uh, breakout group number five. Some of the common themes that people expressed in our um, chat was uh, excitement at, um, you know, Bike Works's explicit stating of racial equity as our focus and that whole intro section. A lot of positive uh, comments and everyone thought that was really great. Lots of excitement for the job access and um, our Bike Works culture as well. Um, people definitely wanted to dive deeper into the plan and, uh, you know, wanted to look at it more and, you know, digest it and sit with it for a little bit longer. But overall, everyone is pretty stoked about those two things. So thanks. Thank you, Allie. Who would like to go next? This is Alicia. I was in break room number eight, or breakout room number eight. And um, um, we talked about the excitement of the, um, the program where the kids will be able to come and learn about how to build bikes or how to work on bikes and, and the development of being in the program and what that's gonna do for them. And that was very exciting. And we also talked about um, how do we get the word out to the community that the bike mobile goes to um, different parks within the city. And, and then what, what about outside of the city? So we talked about that, um, let's see. I guess the envir environmental adjustment, what does it mean to bike works uh, and the salvation of bikes, which is where the people donate the bikes. So we've got that going on. Um, and then they talked about also the Washington Environmental Health Disparity um, Organizations and Community Connections. Um, yeah, and yeah, so yeah, that's our part. 
Thank you. Thank you, Alicia. We have time for two or three more. Who else would like to, to share? Justin, you raise your hand. Yeah, hey, thanks everybody. So I was uh, the note taker for group six and we spent a decent bit of time diving in on the culture topic. Uh, everybody was really excited about that. So we talked about how, um, how you know, having an inclusive culture is so important because for an organization's health because it affects decision-making and our everyday actions um, for you know, just all aspects of an organization's success. Um, also, people really appreciated hearing about uh, how already our increase in diversity in just a year is, is really, really you know, fantastic, con concrete, deliverable progress. Um, we also, you know, we explored a little bit some questions of um, how culture um, has become more inclusive without placing the burden of that on people of color. That was an, kind of an interesting aspect of culture that we, we discussed. Uh, and then a little bit uh, about how we can connect with um, kind of the activism that really is at the heart of racial equity uh, as an organization, as, you know, uh, staff members, board members, and as, uh, you know, customers and members, members of the community. So it's a really great conversation. Thanks to my group. Great. Thanks, Justin. I think we have time for two more. Would, would two more um, groups like to share? I raised my hand. This is Larissa. Um, and we were group seven. We actually, uh, there was some appetite to talk about um, space. So um, we asked the question, what would be ideal for space in the, the new space in the community? Um, and some of the ideas were, well, a community meeting place. Um, would it make sense uh, to be uh, really focused on the local community, community where our new location will be? Um, we also recognize that things like group rides need a place to meet. And um, to that, we also talked about the bike shop as being a community member itself. Mm -hmm. So um, a, a place where local uh, community members can use the bike shop and feel as um, a part of it as the local communities um, have felt for decades about the Yellow House. Uh, we also talked about, um, you know, kind of making sure we really focus on the roots of our organization, which is this kid, bringing kids in, teaching them to build and repair bikes, um, acknowledging that the white house, oh, sorry, the yellow house is a very small space. And so let's prioritize in our new space, more um, area for um, kids to do that kind of work. Uh, we also talked about uh, reaching the right uh, target communities. Uh, we, we need to be located in a place where the people who we want to serve actually live, not a place that is um, only tied to like the nostalgia, but the environment around has, has been changing. And kids taking the bus or commuting in other ways to get to the Yellow House is a barrier. So we'd like to you know, remove those barriers to access our services. Um, and we, well, we talked about a bunch of other things. So uh, we just reiterated the importance of doing uh, feasibility studies, identify the communities we want to serve, test the validity of our assumptions. You know, will these target communities actually choose to um, participate in our offered services, that sort of thing. And then we also uh, talked about metrics and uh, KPIs. What are we measuring? Um, there was a comment that the, the plan was, was a little bit thin on the numbers, um, but uh, we also know that there is a much more detailed plan that we are not sharing publicly, and that um, a lot of these, um, some of these KPIs, these metrics, um, we have thought through. Uh, and then there was some question about the Yellow House. Are we going to keep keep it um, as 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 maybe a what was the term we were using? Someone help me out. I didn't write it in the notes. Um, hub and spoke. Sorry. Um, and you know, so that we don't um, completely lose that, um, that uh, tether to our past. Um, and I think, yeah, that was us, that was group seven. Thank you, Larissa. We do have time for one more. 
Would someone so, like to share? I can go. This is uh, Ed Yoshida. I wasn't a note Thanks, taker, Ed. but I was in group two, and, and we were talking about the access to job opportunities uh, component mm -hmm. of the plan. Mm -hmm. And a, a couple of like, high level points that came out of uh, that conversation we were having was related to the point of the bicycle being a vehicle, but the kind of skills that, that youth can get out of the programs that we can have will really or could position them, you know, for, for jobs and employment opportunities outside of the bicycle industry per se, right? It could be in transportation, engineering, customer service, retail sales, a lot of other areas, you know, that um, maybe even touch indirectly, but, you know, uh, are related to the bicycle, you know, as that vehicle that we're envisioning. Uh, and um, there was an interesting point brought up by Maggie. He's a student and he's participating tonight. And he lives up north in, in Edmonds and he was saying how, while well, he as a, a, a bike person was able to educate himself by going into bike shops and things that um, his friends of color were really not able or not able to do that as much, right? Given the most bike shops are owned and operated by, by white, white males typically, right? And, and so they didn't have that kind of opportunity. And so I think, you know, the bike works programs, if they're accessible online, would be another aspect and way that that youth that don't live within the Seattle area close to bike works maybe could help and be participating in these programs as well, possibly. So thank you, Ed. Great. Thanks everyone. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I saw Tina on screen. Tina, did I miss anything that you wanted to add in? Because you were kind of taking the notes and things. I was, and I was, um, I'm, I'm impressed by, by what you, you just pulled out of there. That was, that was perfect. So thank you, Ed. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for sharing. Um, we actually have a little additional time, which is great. Um, so now we want to open it up for questions and you can do one of two things is unmute, unmute your mic um, or use the chat. Uh, we really want to engage everyone in, in a Q&A session here um, for the next 10, say 15 minutes. So um, who would like to uh, start? Um. Are you just able to go? Sorry. Um, hi, my name is Momoko. I'm the executive director for the Community Cycling Center here in Portland, Oregon. And I'm just, I'm so curious now about this more detailed report and particularly around KPIs, because that's something that I've been thinking about a lot. Um, and um, is that something that at some point in time would become more uh, public or, you know, would somebody possibly like to meet with me and talk more to me about that at some point in time? Yes, happy to do that. And thank you for joining us tonight. I'm very familiar with the uh, Community Cycling Center and I, I would love to dialogue with you on that. Absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. What's up, Momoko? Good to see you. It's Ricky. Yeah, I saw you, Ricky. Hi. <laughs> it's, it's a couple more familiar faces. Hi, everyone. Yeah. Gives me an excuse to go to Portland. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Momoko. Well, I would like to share, I did send a message to Larissa. I was really pleased to hear the idea or I guess conversation that was built out in the group discussion around bike works as a community space and kind of building on the mission, you know, within that strategic plan to, to kind of foster that community element for youth. I think that right now is just such a great time to be thinking about that. And as you're looking at new spaces or expanding your mobile operations, I think having a, a place where people can also socialize and network in addition to learning the skills available through the, the bike shop is just was really, I thought that was a really great point. So I just wanted to say thumbs up. All right. Thank you, Teresa. I totally agree. Just having a safe space for, for youth to go is very important, whether they're learning bike skills or they just want a safe space to hang out 
it's it's a great idea. I would chime in that when we had our big retreat where a lot of this plan was put together, we did kind of do this conceptualizing what a new space might have. And there was definitely like a youth only lounge or kind of hang space in there. And then every group said that the new bike works would need its own velodrome or pump track. So I think that there's a lot of appetite <laughs> for that, especially because, um, those of you who've been to the shop know that we're right off Rainier Avenue South. So when we send people out on test rides, we're like, take a left, don't go right. Um, so I think the dream would be that there's a pump track to, to ride on and uh, safely offer test rides to customers. Just, this is dreaming big. This is definitely uh, for the future. Hey, Ed, um, I was looking through the, some of the chat. One uh, participant is asking the question of how was the strategic plan created and what was the process? Do you want to just give a couple minute summary of that to let people know how it was done? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Great, great, great question. Um, the, it was a year long process and it was facilitated by an organization called Beloved Community. Uh, they're out of New Orleans and um, there was... Um, a couple different groups that were interviewed and over the course of a year, um, there was a racial equity task force that was created specifically for this process. Um, our youth advisory council, um, the board of directors and current staff. And again, all four of these groups were engaged um, uh, for a year. Um, one thing that struck me by this process um, was when um, is that the feedback from the racial equity committee um, created a racial equity plan um, and that plan was integrated into the overall strategic plan. So everything that the strategic plan um, was, was, was detailed was viewed through a racial equity lens. And that's one thing that really kind of intrigued me. Um, oftentimes you'll have a racial equity plan and a strategic plan and they live separately. But with this bike work plans, they're integrated um, as one. So again, anything and everything that we are doing, we're looking at through a racial equity lens. Um, as a community member, um, being a part of the racial equity task force, um, we were actually paid for our time and for our participation. That's one thing that also is very unique to this plan is that um, community members um, who are experts in their communities and who are have valuable um, information and relationships and experience in the community, um, that time and those relationships and that expertise has value. So those individuals were paid for their time. And again, that information and that feedback was, was integrated into the overall strategic plan. So again, everything that we do and everything that we look at in all areas of the organization um, are viewed through a racial equity lens. Um, someone asked about metrics and, and, um, and reporting and accountability. Um, we will be coming out with <clears throat> we will be coming out with um, specific metrics that we will be reported on. We haven't determined the frequency if that's quarterly or if it's you know every half year um, or yearly, but that is part of the accountability that holds us as an organization accountable for what we say we're going to do. So um, um, again, it was a year-long process. Um, it was extremely thorough. Um, we still have access to beloved community. Um, for because part of their philosophy is not just to do the planning, but also to assist in the implementation. Um, one thing that we also um, notice is that when we engage the community in the racial equity task force, um, some of those members of the task force became um, some of those members of the task force became board members, and so we actually were had a very authentic and thorough process to to identify community members. And, and invite them to be part of our overall leadership, which again, builds accountability, um, increases authenticity of our plan and helps center us in all the work that we're doing and make sure that we are aligned with community goals. Is that helpful? And please, if there's any staff like Tina um, or, or Jess or, or, um, or Allie, if anyone else wants to add the perspective, please do so. Bill, did you want to ask your question? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, 
yeah, the mission takes money. So I was wondering, um, have you guys thought about, or do you have any idea of, of what, um, how the financial support for Bike Works needs to evolve over the span of the strategic plan to support the mission? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Um, and 2020, um, as we all know, was, was very, very difficult. And um, we are very fortunate to receive our first PPP loan. Um, we've applied again, um, but having bike works or bike shops being deemed an essential business um, and bike bikes being deemed an essential outdoor safe act activity during COVID, I mean, it really helped um, drive sort of business. And we all know that the, the bike business, um, bike world has just exploded. Um, so we're very, very well positioned and hopefully that bikes will still be and bike shops will still be deemed an essential, um, um, essential business. Um, what we are looking at as far as growing and diversifying our funding is we're looking at growing through partnerships. Um, there is a lot of um, interest in racial equity and, and social justice right now and Bike Works is perfectly placed. Um, and we're also perfectly placed to, to engage other partners in the community not only regarding around funding, but also re regarding um, um, sharing resources. Um, one big thing that we're looking at as part of the strategic plan is, is regarding the space. And that does take money. It may take a capital campaign if we choose to move. Um, and so once again, if that is the case, we'll be sourcing and engaging the community in that process um, and asking us to lead, you know, perhaps we do need a, a capital campaign, but we will look into the community for guidance on that. So um, your, your question is, um, is ex extremely important. Um, we are very, very well positioned um, um, through additional, through existing resources and additional resources in the community to, to actualize this strategic plan financially as well. Thank you. Yeah, that's so well said, Ed. Um, this is Tina here, and um, I don't really have anything to add. I think you said everything beautifully, except for, um, you know, I've been at Bike Works for a grip, and it's just really phenomenal to see, um, you know, old people who used to work in the bike shop, uh, old board presidents, hello, Bill Lippy, um, volunteers from back when I was a volunteer coordinator, hi, Kyle, like there's just there's deep love in the community for bike works and that shows tonight. And I'm just really excited about that. So thank you all. Thank you, Tina. So I'd just love to know how I can help. I think I love <laughs> bike works and have loved supporting bike works. Um, you know, to be perfectly honest and fair, I'm part of a bike club that's very, very white and uh, I'd love it to be more diverse. I'd love to figure out how to help the cycling community be more diverse and how to bring more diverse folks to cycling. Um, and I just, I just wanna know how I can help sure. bike works and help make that happen. I'll send you my Venmo. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think the first step is is asking that question because uh, a lot of people are afraid to ask that question, and especially in in the road bike scene, um, have been part of it for thirty years. I get it. I really, really do. Um, and if you'd like, invite the members of your team, um, invite the the officials of your club. Um, into a dialogue. We're happy to dialogue uh, with them as far as how we've done it um, at Bike Works. And it's not just Bike Works. There are a lot of other teams and clubs in Seattle and across the country that are really doing some great work around diversity and inclusion. There's a movement started last summer called the Peace Peloton by Doc Wilson, a good friend of mine, that and if who has reached out um, to support Black businesses and <clears throat> to start of the black business, end of the black business for economic reform for, for African-Americans. And the, the numbers of people that have shown up and the diversity that has shown up um, on those rides is just phenomenal. And if you pay, 
paint the vision and the mission of what you're trying to do. If you paint that so big um, and focus on that, you're going to get the numbers of diversity. And it's not just in words, it's also in actions. Um, there's another group involved um, in Seattle called North Star Cycling, led by Edwin Lindo and Aaron Bossett, who have truly embraced um, their specific goal is to get black and brown people on bikes, period. And the rides um, are, are drawing anywhere from 40 to 60 people who just want to ride bikes with people who look like them, um, who just want to ride bikes and get out in the community. And if, you're, if it's an all white um, or predominantly white team, is to really ask, ask yourself, um, ask yourself and understand and know the why. Why are you trying to do this? What about this is important for you? And then really be a stand for that because, and also know that you don't have to do it alone. There's a lot of teams, a lot of clubs here in Seattle and the Northwest and across the country that are, that are not just embracing diversity, they're doing something about it. They're actively doing it. They're going out, having conversations, they're being vulnerable. They're realizing that the road racing scene is not very diverse. Um, USA Cycling is also part of that, part of that community and part of that conversation. Um, but there are ways to do it. And then also um, be patient because it takes time because um, it's relational and you have to be very authentic. If you're not authentic about it and creating a team culture that invites, attracts, and retains um, writers of color and diversity of writers, it's not gonna work. So very, be very planful, be very authentic, be very deliberate and give itself some time because it, it's, it's based on relationships. So happy to, um, you, you know where to find me at BikeWorks, happy to entertain that conversation. Um, maybe it's a sit down meeting at BikeWorks and we can talk about that, um, but um, it's possible. And it starts with the, with, the com with the question that you just asked. And Ed, if I can just jump in real quick. Hey, this is Justin Resnick, uh, another member of a predominantly white male cycling team in the Seattle area. So I uh, totally understand the question and can relate to that. And, uh, you know, one thing that I think we put out, uh, I'm a Bike Works board member as well. Um, so one thing the organization shared recently, and a Space Cadet Racing member, thank you, Alec, <laughs> is uh, we are collecting uh, bikes and bike parts specifically for North Star Cycling as well as for Bike Works generally. So, you know, to those of us from, you know, uh, racing teams with lots of really, really nice bikes and lots of pretty nice stuff that we replace from time to time that still has some, some life left in it, there are definitely uh, great things that we can do to support our community with those, uh, those materials. So, you know, find a time to drop them off down at the shop. More questions, we still have time. I have a question. Uh, hi there. Hi, Annika, how are you? I'm great, I'm so glad to be part of this conversation. Um, Thank you for being here. So yeah, so I wanted to just jump back a few questions and just find out more about how you see, you know, youth leadership and youth contributions through the um, implementation of the plan. You know, somebody said earlier, you know, youth are really the heart and soul of bike works and just wondering, you know, as this implementation rolls forward, how do you see kind of doing that, um, that uh, verification or kind of cross-checking with your core constituency, um, you know, both youth who are in the programs and then other, you know, potential sort of youth, youth who might be part of the programs as maybe, uh, you know, geographic reach expands or other things. Um, you know, other things grow and change for the organization. Got it. Uh, Ricky, Tina, or jo Joelle, would you like to jump in and share your perspective? Um, hey, Annika, it's been a minute. What's up? <laughs> um, yeah, um, I think through I mean, it's been a crazy year because we've we've had to reshift a lot of the, the things that we've been doing. We we didn't really do any youth programming um, last year. We shifted to providing uh, bike repair through our uh, bike mobile. Um, we were providing free bike repair for low income families, primarily BIPOC uh, youth, 
and um, trans femme folks. Um, and so we have been trying to kind of like keep tabs on um, on young people through, um, we've, been, we've been trying to keep tabs on young people digitally or like virtually, but it's really hard with, um, with like Zoom fatigue and all that stuff. Um, so this year we're really trying to ramp back up to um, that youth engagement. Um, hopefully with COVID, we get to do that stuff actually in person um, as uh, the guidelines soften and, and we're able to kind of actually have in-person programming. But, um, but we're really working hard to start implementing. We, it's not that we didn't have leadership programming in the past, um, but we are making a concerted effort to kind of incorporate more leadership into the inner workings of our uh, earn a bike programming, um, where in the past we've had classes, um, where now we're, we're looking to implement um, having young people being the, the leaders and the role models for, that, for those um, spaces particularly. And um, with that, it's gonna take a lot to build back up the core constituencies that we had. We used, I mean, I used to, I've been here since 2013. And I remember when we used to walk into uh, Saturday drop-ins and there'd be 25 young people in our downstairs area. And to have that in my earlier years and to, to show up now and be like, I haven't seen a young person in our space in months, you know? And so it's, it's kind of, um, COVID has really affected that, but um, we're working towards like building these leadership curriculums and, um, and leadership has always been incorporated into the, the workings through programs, but um, in a sense, sorry, can y'all still see me? Yep. In a sense, um, kind of like using that um, that leadership as a way for them to like be more incorporated into the the fuller organization, um, and in a sense, it's like bringing back that youth advisory committee to be able to be taking part in these conversations and being involved in the in the bigger process, and ultimately the decision making because as a community governed space, we should be taking the, the young people, young people's words. Yep. Yeah. Amen. Thanks, Ricky. Yeah, I don't know if, if anybody else wants to add to that, Tina or, or Joelle. I think you summed it up. I think you summed it up sweet and effective. That was, that was awesome. So I'll step back. I will say that the first thing we did in January of this year was to build, rebuild that community youth space that, um, that Elise was speaking to earlier. Um, we recreated the youth lounge and we've, and because of COVID we have high school aged alumni youth um, that we're, we're now courting that 18 to 24 year old um, young adult space. And, and we're asking them to come in and and be a part of the space again and really lead it and, and pay them to be in that work. So those are both really exciting pieces that I'm, I'm really pumped about for right now. And just seeing them in the space again. Oh my goodness. Yes. <laughs> and I would Come just back. add, I would add to build on what Ricky and Tina said, I do think that the through line of youth development and youth leadership affects every section of the strategic plan. So the reason why we're focusing on internal culture in year one is that it's a building block for when youth come back in the space, we wanna have a mentor on staff who's like helping guide their experience as they start to intern in development or in the bike shop or you know, in recycle and reuse. And that the ultimate goal is if we do the building blocks well, youth are going to be attracted to this. They're going to be involved in the community engagement strategies that we build. And ultimately the next generation of bike work staff and leadership and bike mechanics and engineers and all sorts of other professions throughout 
uh, the Seattle region will be fed by that program that we build. So I think we're really looking at this plan as very interconnected and there's not like a youth programming stream of the strategic plan intentionally. Thanks everyone. And I realize I not to take up too much more time, but I just wanted to clarify, like really my question, and I think you guys all answered this is how is, you know, youth experience a KPI? Like how, as you mm. roll out the plan, like how, you know, there's community engagement, that's, that's hopefully a KPI. Like what do community members want? potential partners, but then also like, what's the youth experience and like, how do you incorporate that into the evaluation and, mm. and implementation process? So, th mm. but thank you all. I'm super stoked to get back involved. So Got it. Thanks for those answers. Thank you, Annika. Well, it's, it's 7.30 um, and being mindful of everyone's time. Um, thank you all for joining us tonight. This has been fantastic. We really appreciate your, your sharing authentically, your ideas. Um, again, we will be sharing out um, the notes from this evening um, in an email to you all, everyone who has signed up. Um, again, this is a, re a recorded event. This is also gonna be on the website and also on YouTube. Um, so, and then if you think of anything that, um, uh, any questions that we didn't cover this evening um, or just wanna, have a conversation about specific aspects of the strategic plan or just bike works in general, feel free to reach out to any of staff. You know, we're accessible, um, I'm accessible. Um, our emails are on uh, the website. Um, I'll just give you mine. It's ed at bikeworks.org. We wanna hear from you because ultimately you will hold us accountable for achieving this, this uh, strategic plan. So with that, um, thank you all for being here tonight. Um, have a great evening. And um, thank you for supporting Bike Works. <laughs>